Hello, my name is Thomas Beale. I'm the CTO of Ocean Informatics and one of the architects of Open Air. Today I'm going to talk about templates as part 8 of the ADL 1.5 training course. The outline of topics uh, you can see on the screen will look at how templates work. We'll also look at what we can think of as downstream artifacts, that is things you can generate from templates, and a little bit about tooling. Let's first consider why we need templates and to do that we can think about what archetypes are. An easy way to think of them functionally is that they are topic or theme based definitions of reusable data points and groups. They essentially provide a way to define a library of domain level data points and groups, things that you would find in actual clinical data. We can think about it in another way. Archetypes provide an answer to the question, if I want to record X, say mean arterial pressure, how do I do it? An archetype is the place that you can standardize this kind of definition. Now archetypes, uh, as you know, usually contain more than one data point. We can think of them as containing data groups uh, and they might be quite large. Uh, groups such as you'll find in the microbiology archetype. So these groupings act as design and governance packages. That is, the data points are grouped according to their natural relationships in biomedical science. So all of the data points and little groups that you'll find in the blood pressure archetype or symptom archetype or adverse reaction archetype naturally go together. They rel they're related by uh, their definitional nature in biomedical science. Technically, archetypes achieve this using a constraint formalism, which you know about by now, and that enables specialization, composability, and flexibility. So what archetypes don't do is to define a data set for a particular use case. Now, it happens that some archetypes sometimes do look like a data set, particularly laboratory results, but this isn't actually the case. So a lipids archetype isn't the same as a chem7, for example. In general, archetypes are just a stepping stone to models of, of content, in other words, data sets, what we can think of as use case-based data sets sets of data points that correspond to a particular situation. So our definition of an ADA 1.5 template is a set of data groups and data points taken from one or more referenced archetypes and further refined and removed as needed. Technically a template is just a kind of archetype, that is, it's expressed in the ADO 1.5 syntax and or AOM 1.5 objects in the in-memory form. So you can think of an ar a template as just being a way of using ADL AOM 1.5 and the important thing about that is it means that only one kind of tooling is needed. We don't need new tools or new compilers or new validators to build ADO 1.5 templates. So some examples of things that are likely to be templates, there's a few on the screen. D discharge summary, which typically contains things like patient provider demographics, history issues, labs, diagnosis, all kinds of things. These data points, as you can guess from what you know about archetypes already, are chosen from multiple archetypes. A prescription, in a business sense, this seems like a very simple thing. We're used to thinking of it as a single piece of paper, probably, with maybe one or more uh, medicines mentioned on it. Technically, it's a list of medication orders. It may include dispensing and or safety information. The last example is a radiology report. This doesn't just include the actual radiology report, but typically order-related information, some patient demographics, uh, possibly an image thumbnail and other information. All of these pieces of information will be drawn typically from multiple archetypes. In our overall modelling ecosystem, templates have an important function. You can see them there in the centre of the diagram. 
So they define use case specific data sets. From a software engineering point of view, they're the first modeling artifact that can actually be used uh, to build software engineering artifacts. So you can see that what happens in OpenAir is the templates are converted into what we call operational templates, that is uh, a computable form which is the flattened form of the template including all of its archetypes. It looks like a giant archetype essentially. From that further downstream generations are possible, for example into Java, C Sharp, any uh, code source code you care to name in the form of an API which can be used to program uh, data capture uh, corresponding to the template, also XML schemas, UI forms and so on. From various kinds of XML schemas uh, we can define message definitions, document definitions and from any of these uh, at, when deployed at runtime data can be created that data can be queried, as you probably remember from this ecosystem diagram before, by queries built from the archetypes. So those templates provide the joining point between the, the modeling space, that is the grey part of the diagram on the left hand side, where domain specialists tend to work, and the software engineering space, which is the space on the, top, on the right hand side of the diagram. How do templates work? Well, as I've already mentioned, they provide a way of building a data set specification from archetypes. So what actually happens is they choose data points from various archetypes and they get rid of unneeded data points. So choosing, first of all, you have to choose the actual archetypes in question and that's done by slot filling. You'll remember that a slot in an archetype is a point where the modeler has said, well, I won't keep modeling this archetype in line. Instead, I'm going to put a slot here and specify what archetypes could be plugged in. So a slot is a plug-in point. In a template, we say what will fill the, the slot, that is, what will be actually plugged in. The second thing we can do is to constrain things, that is, data points and groups, uh, from with, uh, within those plugged-in archetypes to being zero, that is occurrence is equal zero. In other words, to get rid of things we don't want. Other things can be constrained to one to one. That means to mandate them. Lastly, we can leave slots open or closed. That means that the slots themselves could have further things added in, for example, by a further specialization of the template or even at runtime. Also, we can leave elements as uh, optional, that is cardinality 0 to 1. There's no problem with that. That just means that those uh, elements remain optional right up to runtime. So that th those operations are to do with choosing and uh, mandating or removing the data points that we want to use. That essentially defines the data set. Then we can perform further constraining. That means, for example, uh, reducing or, or specifying where it wasn't previously specified, the terminology subsets. We can reduce value ranges and so on. Technically, as I've mentioned, templates are just an ADO 1.5 archetypes using 2.2 2 features not typically used in archetypes. Slot filling uh, that is filling a slot with an archetype or another template and data point removal that is constraining occurrences and or existence to zero. Only slot filling is a new operation in ADO 1.5. In fact everything else was available in 1.4 in some form. So semantically what templates actually enable is the inclusion of other archetypes and templates with modifications local to the including template. So, let's have a little trip through an example to uh, give us a pictorial idea of how all that works. There we've got an archetype, it's an encounter uh, archetype, that is a record of a, let's say, a normal general practice patient encounter. It's of the composition 
reference model type from the open air reference model. You can see two slots defined in there at two different path locations. So at some point in the archetype where the intention is to record vital signs, there's a slot saying allow observation archetypes that match and the specification is for vital signs archetypes. So we can assume that uh, they've been specified in some way to be limited to things like blood pressure, heart rate and the usual things. The second path is to where medications are supposed to be recorded and that slot is for instruction objects and uh, the specification is for instruction archetypes that are some kind of medication order. So that's our top level archetype. What we're trying to do is plug in things like the two archetypes you see on the right hand side. So let's say a blood pressure measurement which is an observation archetype and a medication order archetype which is uh, based on the instruction class. Now the way to do this, firstly we specialize that archetype into a template. So a template is a specialized archetype, essentially the same kind of thing as a specialized archetype. So the specialization operation works to enable you to create a new archetype based on an original or a template based on an archetype and indeed a template based on a template. So we have a template uh, of this encounter and of course it's of the same reference model type composition and we are now going to fill those two slots with these particular archetypes. Now let's just think about this carefully. Do we want to put those two archetypes, that is the blood pressure and the medication order, in their entirety into those two positions. It's extremely unlikely and the reason is if you look at the well if you look at both of them but particularly the top one you'll see uh, in the usual fashion those archetypes are maximal data sets. They contain things uh, that you will never need altogether. In other words they contain the maximal set of possible things but for the particular purpose at hand you'll only need a few of them. So in fact what you'll really do is modify these two uh, includable archetypes, these two slot fillers. They'll be templated themselves for the purpose of this overall templating operation. And so we'll have a templated blood pressure and a templated medication order with various things removed and changed and so on. And the top level template will include those two. So we'll just have a look at the details of what goes on to achieve that. There's our inclusion. So we've established that we've got template forms of the blood pressure and the medication order and that we're going to specify them as the fillers in those two locations on the left in the uh, encounter archetype. So one of the things that those templates achieve is removals and you can see that we're likely to get rid of quite a lot of data points. It's quite reasonable to only have a, a very small percentage of the data points from the archetype. So in the top one we're going to have systolic and diastolic pressure, cuff size, location that is on the body and what device was used. We can also mandate uh, other nodes. So we might mandate systolic pressure on the basis that a blood pressure doesn't mean anything if you don't have the systolic at least and we may mandate the cuff size and location for some particular purpose. In the medication order uh, template down the bottom right you can see that the name of the medicine has been mandated and that the ingredients in the form has been mandated. The third kind of thing that we'll typically do is refinement. I've only shown one refinement here and that is to refine the ingredients and form uh, data point from the medication order template to be uh, a smaller subset of the original subset of codes. So let's assume that it was originally codes for tablet powder capsule, caplet, liquid and possibly more. We want to remove powders and liquids and we'll end up with a smaller set. Another possible refinement that might have been performed on this particular template is the medicine, that is the first data point in the medication order there is uh, would be refined to be a value set from potentially a national 
medications code set. So these constraints are made only on the observation instruction archetypes, in, in, only in the context of the composition and counter template. In other words, we consider these three little templates as part of the same logical template. The templates on the right hand side, that is the blood pressure and the medication order, don't affect any other use, even by another template, of the original blood pressure and medication order archetypes. Although, they could be reused, and that would be a conscious design decision to reuse the two templates on the, the right. And since a template is just an archetype, reuse is easy because you can plug in a template anywhere, you can plug in an archetype. We won't talk about that any further, however, but it's useful to remember that it can be done. So, now we've got our, our final sort of template, and you can see that uh, we're just showing the effective uh, data points taken from those uh, two plugins, that is the blood pressure and the medication order. Of course, I haven't shown the whole path structure, uh, just to keep things simple. We can consider that template on the left as a single logical template, even though, as you've seen, it's made up of three pieces. And this is the source form, that is the, if you like, uh, authored form. It's the result of uh, a human using an authoring tool and saving the template. In this step, we compile it into something called the operational template, that is, a single AOM uh, structure in memory, and that represents the totality of the structure of the template. So with all the plugins uh, assessed, plugged in, flattened, and the result will be a large, or typically large, archetype uh, structure. So it's like a single giant archetype. So what we've achieved here is built the uh, if you like, the data set that we wanted in the first place from various reusable pieces that were lying around, that is our library of archetypes, doing some templating, so choosing which ones to use, refining them, removing stuff we didn't want, and then as a result uh, of the compilation step, getting to what our original design intent was, that is a structured data set uh, specification. So uh, this will be an AOM structure in memory, and it can be serialized into XML or any other form, even ADL, JSON, and so on. We'll see some examples in a second. So the last thing, looking from the uh, software development point of view, is to generate implementation artifacts from that operational template. So the OPT isn't that interesting on its own, although it can be used in runtime systems, and it is used in some runtime systems, but one of the things that we're likely to want to do is to generate various kinds of outputs which we saw in the ecosystem diagram. So a generator, for example, that generates XSDs, i.e. XML schemas, uh, might be able to generate various flavors of XSD. As we all know, there's never just one, there's always one for a, a given purpose. The same thing can be done with generating what we call template data objects that is programming objects that allow us to manipulate the overall template as a design object uh, in, in memory and within software. So these are the artifacts that software developers want to get their hands on. And the point of doing this downstream generation is that they don't have to have a PhD in health informatics or understand all of the theory or in fact much at all of the theory of archetypes, templates and all this complicated stuff. They can actually work with what they would consider to be very normal uh, programming. So we'll look at an example now. The example I'm going to use is uh, a set of example archetypes uh, found on the OpenAir Subversion Repository Knowledge2. You can see the URL there. If we go inside trunk, we'll see among the archetypes some OpenAir examples and this one here, EHR Extract Template. If you have the Subversion repository downloaded, you will be able to make yourself uh, a repository just containing this open air extract example in the usual way. So, given that we're talking about templates, we'll be able to actually see that some templates have been found. Now what I'm going to do is just compile the overall template and we'll explore it to start making sense of it. So the top level template is an extract, open air extract, and so you can see here we have the template 
compiled, including all of its pieces. What we're seeing here on the screen is the uh, top-level template in its source form. If I was to press this button here, of course, we would get the fully flattened form. But before I do that, let's just think about what we're looking at. So that template is a specialization of an archetype. We can see the archetype. That's its parent uh, over here. So let's think about this uh, original archetype. It's an archetype for discharge summaries based on an extract consisting of chapters in which there are various uh, various various chapters that have been defined. Now this is part of the reference model that you may not be that familiar with. It doesn't really matter. Just think of them as containers containing further pieces because the point is, just as we always uh, do in uh, ADL based archetyping and templating, we're just building a reference model structure and at some point making certain constraints. So the important constraints are that inside this chapter object we have a bunch of participations you can see three of them. If I go to the domain view, it's uh, a little bit clearer. Patient demographic content. So something about a patient. Remember, we're talking about a discharge summary here, so something about a patient makes sense. Something about the healthcare establishment, that is where the patient was discharged from, and something about the health professional uh, who was involved in the discharge, the responsible professional. So each of these just contains a slot for a certain kind of uh, archetypal template that would be able to be fitted in. So you can see that there's some matching person uh, archetypes and templates that would fit in that slot there. So our template at the top level indicates those paths. These paths here are the paths that we're seeing to each of these points here and it's saying please fill them in with a particular uh, archetype or template, in this case uh, a little template of a patient, a healthcare establishment uh, archetype and a healthcare professional archetype. Down the bottom here we have uh, another path pointing to clinical information about the subject so that corresponds to this path here and in this uh, original archetype there's a slot for patient discharge data so this is the actual clinical information of the discharge summary and here we're saying fill it with uh, a T clinical info DS so a particular little template and on all of these slots we also add the constraint to close them which you may remember from previous installments of this training interestingly at another point we have another path and a constraint which is forcing certain reference model uh, elements that haven't been previously archetyped or templated anywhere but right now in this template we're uh, setting the existence to be one which means that they are required, they've become mandatory. If we want to look at the source we can see that the what the structure of all that looks like and in fact it's uh, it's really quite simple we have a number of places where a path is mentioned and we have a use archetype statement it indicates the reference model type and here it includes two things an AT code to say which uh, AT code from the actual slot that it's matching it's referencing and the identifier of an archetype that it wants to put in that slot so what's going on here with the use archetype statement is the process of filling the slot. It's saying in this slot use this archetype. It's also saying close the slot and you can see various instances of that statement. Uh, here's the section where the previously unconstrained reference model attributes have been set to mandatory and this has been done by setting existence matching one. So you'll probably realize that everything here apart from uh, this little construction where we're referencing a slot and putting something in it but everything else is just very standard looking ADL. Now if we go back to that uh, template in this view here we'll see that the compiler has conveniently populated the entire substructure 
So in fact, if you remember from the sort of cartoon view we looked at on the slides, what we have here is uh, an actual real version of exactly what's uh, the total structure, including all those little overlays. So for example, this one here, uh, various person demographic data inside the person patient template. We've got uh, two situa two examples where an archetype has just been used in its totality, so that's not so uncommon with demographic archetypes. It just means that all of the data points are considered to be valid. And here's the total structure of the uh, clinical information. So you can see that in it includes a template whose contents are, and we have some admin entry data points and various um, templates based on evaluation types, so allergy and adverse reactions, clinical synopsis. These are the various different bits and pieces that we might expect to find in an actual discharge summary. If I just click on that one there, we'll just have a look at it. Uh, we can see that it itself is a little template. You can see that it's removing various things that were specified out of the possible things that were defined on the original parent archetype, that is the adverse uh, reaction archetype. So here, most of what's going on here is removals. If we look at the source, you'll see it's done with occurrences matches zero. And the result, just on that particular little thing, is that only what we wanted to keep uh, remains. So, for example, things that have been removed, agent category, specific substance, reaction category. We can see them all there, that's in the parent, agent category, specific substance, reaction category. We go back to the child, look at the flattened form, and you'll see that those things are no longer there. So, the overall template works exactly like that, and because this is a realistic template, there's lots of bits and pieces. So we can choose any particular uh, one of these and we'll, we'll see exactly the same kind of thing where something has been uh, removed or further constrained from its original parent. So there's a little archetype to do with recording information about admission and you can see there are five data points. In the source form you can see that the, uh, uh, the template, the overlay, just removes three of the fields, it mandates one of them, and it actually mandates this one here as well, uh, while still allowing it to be one to star. And the result of that looks like that. So let's go back to the overall template. We'll shrink up this structure and I'll go back to... So there we are, back to the source form of the top-level template. Uh, there are those paths, the various uh, slot fillers and so on that you've seen. Now let's flatten it and see what we see. What we will see is an overall fairly large-scale, uh, we can think of it essentially as a, uh, a data set specification. So this is the result of the template being compiled into the fully flattened form. All of the plugging in has been done and everything that the template specified from its various bits and pieces is there. So you can see that there's rather a large number of data points in there. Everything that's been uh, re specified by all those little bits and pieces we saw on the left hand side, it's all in there. If we want to see this in a form that's actually computational, there's a number of different forms. So we're looking at the uh, same thing but in fully flattened ADL syntax form. That may or may not be the kind of uh, output syntax that you want. So one of the syntaxes that will be one of the more, most important ones that will be standardized in open air to do this job is the XML OPT format and you can see uh, see it there. That isn't necessarily the final uh, standardized form but it's the kind of thing that uh, the OPT will be 
standardized to. So that is a single XML document that conforms to the XSD of the AOM, if you can keep that in your head, corresponding to a single template. Now some s computing environments might like to use other formalisms like JSON, so there's a JSON version, there's a YAML version, and there are all kinds of other things that could be used for this purpose. Let's talk about downstream artifacts. Here we're having a look at a template defined in the Ocean uh, ADL 1.4 based tool. We're just looking at it in this tool so that we can see the downstream artifact generation. The template semantics here are exactly the same as they would be in ADL 1.5. Uh, but there currently isn't an ADL 1.5 uh, template data object and template data schema generator. So here's a template on the left hand side. It happens to be for something called EPSOS Patient Summary, which if you're from Europe, you can probably guess what it is. The TDO generation means to generate what we call a template data object. That is a programming, uh, it's actually a partial class to be technical. That one there you can see is in C sharp. The same thing can be done in other languages of course, and the uh, getter and setter routines and data attributes uh, properties of the class correspond to the actual template from which it was generated. That means the class acts as a kind of API for building data based on that specific template. A template data schema, or TDS, is the same concept, but the forward generation is to an XML schema. So one template equals one XML schema, and the actual XML schema consists of a sort of mixture of reference model attributes and properties and archetyped uh, elements. So in the same way that the elements in the TDO correspond to uh, the nodes from the template, the same thing is true in the TDS. In practical terms, it means that the tag set uh, essentially corresponds to the labels that you find in the template. So you can see allergy agent there and allergy agent turns up as a tag in the TDS. That means a developer can work with these uh, artifacts relatively easily without really having to understand all of the complexity of the modeling that's gone on to get to this point. So in a TDO, property names are domain concept labels from archetypes and templates. All the archetype and template constraints are there, it's tool generated, and it's used to build data instances that conform both to the reference model and to the template. One TDO equals one template, so if you have five templates that you're working with, you'll have five different TDOs. Each one is uh, a custom generation from each of the corresponding templates. Here's another example, a metabolic report template. It's, it's in the same tool and you can see various items that have been uh, included and uh, constrained out and also uh, further refined. In the, uh, we're in Visual Studio here, but you could see the same kind of thing in Eclipse or a Python environment if you had a generation for one of those languages. So you can see various elements from the template there uh, that you're able to find in the template object. You can see over here diastolic, uh, systolic pressure and various bits and pieces. Of course the details are only going to make sense to programmers. There's some detail from the actual class text. You can see here blood pressure observation as a partial class and the rest of the class text is full of such things in Japanese and in other languages. Uh, the basic principle here is that because the constraints, uh, that is the AT codes and their meanings are trans or potentially translated into multiple languages, any downstream generation that includes uh, labels or tags based on those uh, original uh, archetype terms can be done in a particular language. That means we can generate XML schemas and Java code in Swedish, for example. Here we can see uh, that template as a TDS, that is a template data schema, so we're just looking at 
the XML schema form of that template and you can see uh, tags such as uh, subject encoding language, there's one there, blood pressure so this comes from the actual template we've got protocol and protocol over here and so on so a TDS has similar uses to a TDO it gives us potentially a, a form a data model that is a UI uh, form and code standard code generators exist to produce code that can uh, be used as a UI form starting with an XSD and a TDS is an XSD so it's suitable for that purpose it can be used as an interface between system components so what we're doing here really is using it, using it as a message specification a data document corresponding or that is conf conforming to the XSD is an actual message so in that role it acts as a specification of the interface between systems if you wanted to build uh, 10 templates using the methods that we've seen in uh, ADL 1.5 archetypes and templates you might turn them into 10 OPTs, that's operational templates, and convert those to 10 separate template data schemas, that is 10 XSDs and those are the standard, if you think, if you like to think about it as standard technology, so those are the blueprint in a standardized technology of the interface between two systems. Let's have a little look at ADO 1.5 tooling in its, as it currently stands. Uh, it's interesting to think about how the compiler works internally because as you've probably realized by now there's a little bit of complexity in the sense of uh, having a reference model and then various layers of archetypes so what we call a top-level archetype and the potentially specializations including if you remember templates templates are just specialized archetypes inside the uh, archetype compiler all of the source uh, syntax forms get of course turned into AOM object structures and there's a sort of uh, basic parsing step that goes on the general operation is that there's parsing validation and then flattening so the flattening of a top level archetype is essentially a null operation the structure looks the same as the original source structure if we go down to a first level specialization that parent flat structure with the differences that uh, consist in the uh, that specialized archetype the result of flattening that is a flattened archetype over here and that process continues and for as many levels of specialization as there are so the result of that are in memory flattened archetypes this in memory flattened form can be serialized into a syntactic form so over here <coughs> the result of serialization will be an ADL or other syntax file if the input file had been a template which would normally include other archetypes or templates then it will go through this whole process in exactly the same way parsing, validation, flattening and the result over here will be an operational template that is uh, a fully flattened template with all of the inclusions and refinements evaluated and turned into an inline uh, large archetype. The idea 1.5 specification includes validity rules and these are coded as you can see here and each rule specifies just a single validity, validity requirement for a correct archetype or template. These rules are used in software and they're shared amongst different tools. You can see the set of rules that's used in the ADL 1.5 workbench here. In the Open SCKM uh, Clinical Knowledge, Knowledge Manager, you can see exactly the same rule codes and uh, validation being done in this tool. So the point is here that from the specification, standard specification of ADL 1.5, we have a set of uh, standardized validity areas, errors which can be used for uh, tool, tool building to ensure that tools will all operate in the same way and that they can be tested against reference archetypes. 
and you can see how that kind of testing might be done. That's a screenshot of the test tool from the archetype workbench and unusually you're seeing a lot of archetypes that have failed and of course that's the intention. These are speci special test archetypes designed to uh, exercise particular error checking paths in the compiler's validator. Uh, this regression column here checks that each uh, of those did in fact trip the expected error. So the original paths failed but the regression test passed, meaning that uh, each of these caused the error that you can see that's actually part of the archetype name. Our final step here will be to have a quick look at the development status of the ADL and AOM 1.5 specifications. Most of the proposed changes have been implemented and tested and you can see uh, the wiki page whose link is shown there for the up-to-date summary of changes. Some of the key ones that are still to go are default values and namespaces. Some of the outstanding items which haven't quite been finalised in the specification uh, include the semantic slot, so you might remember that from one of the earlier parts of the course. This is the type of slot definition that allows uh, slots to be specified in a, a way similar to a SNOMED subsumption expression. It requires the binding of all archetype root object codes into a central ontology. Making overlays part of a single template file, you'll remember from this presentation that the current structure of overlays is as separate uh, small templates which are included in the root template. This doesn't really have any semantic significance, but from the convenience point of view, it uh, is most likely going to be better for tooling and so on for all of the template uh, overrides to be in the same file. We also expect to add something called example values to enable example instance data. Structurally, this would be the same as default values, but in this case, the example values would be set by the clinical modeler to reasonable meaningful clinical values. The intention would be to be able to generate reasonable example data instances from uh, a real template and that's essentially for educational and testing purposes. People who are familiar with XML tools like Oxygen and XML Spy will know that the default instance generation uh, functions on these kinds of tools aren't terribly good whereas one based on proper example values would be very interesting. Lastly, uh, we have to work to finalise the operational template format. This is essentially just a case of getting the final details right and reviewing them with all of the vendors and other users of OPT uh, templates. Getting that work done is just a case of uh, finalising specifications. This will occur under the new open air governance uh, which will be in place in Q4 2012. So we can expect probably uh, a, a solid release of the specifications in the first quarter of 2013. On the software side we'll probably port the parsler, parser to Antler which will obviously enable more languages to build native implementations. There already are Java.NET uh, Python and Ruby implementations of ADO 1.4 and AOM 1.4 so all of those uh, it's just a case of uh, upgrading. We'll probably also deploy the Eiffel reference compiler, that's the one that's inside the archetype workbench that you've seen in these presentations uh, and that can be deployed under Java and .NET and other languages directly and that's in fact already been done so that capability will be upgraded Lastly, the TDS and TDO generator specifications need to be built and this will be done essentially from industry exemplars that are already known to be working uh, to provide a first version of those. Obviously over time they're likely to improve as they gain wider use. So, let's summarise what we've learned here in this presentation. Templates are use case specific dataset definitions. 
They can be used for screen forms, messages, documents, essentially any specification of data capture, communication or presentation in the sense that it's always a specific data set that's uh, of interest in these situations. The template's the basis for generating downstream software artifacts for all of those purposes above that is actually generating uh, message schemas or document schemas or other kinds of software artifacts. So we can see templates as the joining point between clinical modeling and software. That's where we get traceability from the domain through into software solutions and that's the essential innovation of the open air archetype system. One of the key outcomes is that all similar data, for example blood pressure, is queryable in exactly the same way based on archetypes regardless of which template included them. So just to remind ourselves, here's the ecosystem. You can see templates uh, in the middle there. The modeling uh, subsystem, if you want to think of it that way, is on the bottom left. That's where domain specialists do their work in terms of building archetypes uh, and also templates. And then with the tool chain, we build operational templates, various kinds of downstream artifacts, and eventually those get deployed and create UI forms, data, documents, and so on. As usual, please check out the relevant specifications at these locations. I hope these presentations have been useful and look forward to work working with you in the future in the open air community. Thanks for your attention.